So good morning everybody from Geneva. It's a very sunny day and we are on the fourth day of the WISIS Forum 2023. We have concluded our high level policy sessions and today I have with me high level policy uh, session track facilitators who have moderated the different high level policy sessions. I'd like to move directly to Antonio. Antonio, what was the key takeaway of your session? So, uh, good morning. So, we were discussing uh, uh, trade and finances for ICT and the opportunities that the new digital economy can bring to everyone. And we had an interesting discussion. Everybody agreed on two key points, which is uh, everyone should have equal access to these opportunities, so uh, no one should be left behind. We need to bridge the digital divide. We need to make sure that underserved communities are properly have proper connectivity, affordable connectivity, and so on. And the second thing is that uh, we need to boost confidence and trust uh, to make sure that uh, this digital economy really uh, uh, realizes these opportunities, right? So it's really important that we fight against cybercrime, against scams, against child, against child abuse, and all these things. So I believe these are the main key takeaways of, um, of my session. Thank you, Antonio. We would like to move on to Claire. Uh, so Claire, what were the key takeaways and highlights from your session? I heard you had a very interesting discussion there. We did indeed, thank you. Um, our main takeaway was really that, and delighted to see this, that the conversation has moved on the digital gender divides beyond just counting women. Um, we all, we've known for a long time there has been um, an absence of women in the industry and, mm -hmm. and in research, but today and yesterday we discussed, sorry, that we thought about ways in which this was much more intersectional and considered other dimensions of uh, discrimination from race, class, income, age, geography, which brings a much more transformative and sustainable approach to achieving gender equality in the sector. Thank you, Claire. Uh, bridging the digital gender divide has been one of the main focuses of the entire VISIS process because gender equality is a cross-cutting theme that cuts across all the VISIS action lines. So thank you so much. I'd like to now move on to uh, Pierre. Uh, Pierre, um, what was your session all about? You had so many ministers participating in your session and there was a very, um, a very interesting debate and dialogue. So can you please highlight the key takeaways? Itangeli, the key insight that came out of our session was that uh, digital divide is being uh, addressed aggressively by countries to narrow it. The, the key insight is that digital divide is not just one country versus another. It is gender related. It is cities versus the countryside. It is generation related. So we need to address the digital divide holistically uh, in a country in order to narrow it and address all key stakeholders. Thank you, P Pierre. Indeed, uh, digital inclusion uh, is really important. Uh, gender, youth, older persons. We had a older persons high level track where we focused on how we can align uh, with the decade of healthy aging. You know, healthy aging is a very important concept today. And how can uh, technology help enhance uh, healthy aging? Thank you so much, Pierre. We like to move on to Dr. Liberato. Uh, Liberato, please, uh, what were the key takeaways uh, of your uh, high-level policy session? Our policy session, uh, Gitanjali, focused on e-learning and innovations around that. And I think the, the emphasis given by my panelists has to do with making sure that the infrastructure for e-learning is not only there for all, but including disadvantaged and vulnerable populations, but that there should be resourcing from both government and private sector to make it to make possible for that. My closing statement in my report yesterday has to do with making sure that digital rights are equally the rights of everyone, and so uh, the funding for for. Uh, ICTs uh, for all populations, the aged, the disabled, women and girls, etc., uh, must be met. Thank you, Liberato. Um, education and ICTs for education uh, are playing a key role to connect schools and to get education to the last mile. You know, so it's it's uh, really making a difference, and partnerships are very crucial uh, to make this possible. So thank you very much. I'd now like to move on to uh, Alessandro. 
so Alessandro, what, um, uh, so if you could also highlight some of the uh, challenges, I know that you had several uh, opportunities which were highlighted, so could you also highlight some challenges that were highlighted? Well, the main, the main aspects in my session was about um, providing information and knowledge access to all. And three key dimensions emerged as challenges, but also as opportunities. First of all is a multi-layer approach, starting from infrastructure and coming to capacity building. So to foster both development, but also adoption by the population of the technologies. The second point, in, point is multi-stakeholder approach, so involving private-public partnership, together, putting together government, um, companies, and also NGOs and associations from the civil society. And the third point is find ways to be human-centric, mm -hmm. to catch the real needs of the citizens and associations in order to develop technologies that actually foster the development of countries and citizenships. Thank you, uh, uh, Alexandro. You captured the real essence of the VISIS process. You know, it's a human-centric uh, process, and uh, we have been engaging all stakeholders, civil society, private sector, technical community, uh, academia, so many of you are professors, uh, into the process to see how we can work together to ensure that all expertise across the action lines uh, are inputted into our work. So thank you very much. So Antonio, um, uh, we heard from many countries and diverse stakeholders in your session. Can you cite some of the examples that remained with you? Yeah, of course. So uh, I bet you um, a few good uh, comments were, were shared there. For example, I can cite the uh, digital identity project in India, where they are uh, uh, trying to get uh, authentication and authenticated identity to the whole population in a huge country like India to allow them to securely access digital services. Or we can talk about uh, uh, the partnership in, in Lithuania with different agencies, governments, uh, private partners to fight a uh, cyber scam, to fight child abuse online, or uh, affordability projects in Zambia. So a lot of uh, good projects were shared in the direction of bringing this digital access to everyone. Thank you, Antonio. Uh, we always strive to ensure that each session is covered uh, and well balanced uh, within the regions uh, and diverse stakeholders. So thank you very much. Uh, so Claire, um, uh, of course, your session also had uh, uh, had participants from different regions, um, and they shared so many different examples of how they are bridging the digital gender gap. So could you share some of the uh, examples that stayed with you? Well, I'm pleased to say that our panel was very balanced on gender, generations, and geography, which, of course, led to a, a very a very exciting and, um, uh, discussion. I think one of the things that came up is, whilst we can see a lot of work going on on gender equality within terms of leadership and representation, we also need to focus upon those who are working on the platform labor um, systems in the gig economy, where we continue to see gender inequalities persist. And going forward to the digital compact, I hope that some of these discussions can be brought forward so that we can make a really transformative and sustainable compact in the future. Thank you, Claire. Uh, we're striving towards 50-50 gender participation. Uh, at the WISIS Forum, uh, the delegations are also very uh, gender balanced, so we are very excited to see that. Uh, and we ho do hope that all of us can make our contribution towards, in, uh, towards achieving digital gender equality. Um, Pierre, um, how about your session? Uh, you know, there were really some interesting case examples with, uh, you know, good statistics coming out from your session. So could you please cite some of them? Yes, Gitanjali. A particularly interesting example came out of M Malaysia where uh, accessibility and connectivity is provided uh, to the broad regions of uh, Malaysia. One thing that struck out is that Malaysia really focuses on human intelligence and at a time when everybody's talking about artificial intelligence, making sure that we connect human intelligence is really important and uh, this example in Malaysia really uh, struck me as being uh, forward-looking. 
Thank you very much, Pierre. Um, uh, Liberato, uh, how about your session? You know, you had a diverse stakeholder type in your uh, session who spoke about the different activities and projects in their respective uh, countries. Could you please share some of these examples? Kitanjali, as, as the leader of a non-governmental organization, what struck me the most in the conversation uh, comes from my only civil society speaker from Open uh, UK, and it has to do with free access to information, uh, free access to data. And remember that the WISIS action lines are hinged on the sustainable development goals. The impetus for sustainable development goals has to do with the eradication of hunger and poverty. The 17 goals reduced to one aim is the eradication of hunger and poverty. And if the ICT infrastructure does not visibly and right away stare you in the eye as something that eradicates hunger and poverty, but rather widen the gap for those who have access to ICT and those who do not, we will have failed. And so I was, I, was, I was happy that the session 11 focused on that. Thank you very much, Liberato. Since 2015, we've been aligning the two UN processes, the WISIS process and the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development, where we have been highlighting how each WISIS action line, whether it be infrastructure, access, cybersecurity, is contributing towards the advancement of the achievement of the SDGs. Absolutely. Thank you, Liberato. <clears throat> so, Alessandro, um, uh, how about your session? Uh, you know, you had uh, some interesting uh, discussions uh, at regional and national level projects. Uh, could you please share some of those with us? Yeah, I would like to, to pick one. The Slovenian example provided by our chairperson of UCIS 2023, the Minister of Digital Transformation in Slovenia. Mm -hmm. Because you know, it is an example of that multi-layer approach I cited before. They structured this approach, providing first network coverage for all the country, providing connectivity in all the regions. Then they structure an intervention for financial support for citizens for purchasing devices, enabling the access to that network. Then they started with providing skills and knowledge with programs, both in schools, but also f bridging the gender gap for women, for silver age people, and finally, they are digitizing the services provided at governmental level, so health, education, public administration. This integrated ap approach represents a, a best practice on how to provide a real access for all through digital transformation. Thank you, Antonio. Uh, of course, we have to keep in mind, like uh, uh, like uh, Liberato said, that uh, you know um, we have to make sure that the digital transformation is reaching the last mile, and we are able to align the different sustainable development goals with what we've been trying to achieve with the uh, digital economy, uh, digital sustainable uh, development. Thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, we had a very very exciting high level track. Uh, we heard from different uh, high-level participants, from ministers, from head of regulatory bodies, head of civil society organizations, universities, uh, technical communities, United Nations uh, uh, agencies on what's happening all over the world with respect to their uh, mandates. And, um, it was really exciting to hear about these interesting case studies. WISIS Forum is about networking, learning, and sharing. And uh, we are very happy to learn that uh, all of it materialized at this WISIS Forum 2023. So thank you very much.